How's everybody doing? Great. Wow. Can't believe it. It's just kind of uh, kind of a dream come true for me today. So you might have to bear with me. Um, I feel like God's given me the best thing in the world. And um, I feel very um, emotional about it. So if I cry the whole sermon, just, just say, that a boy, just keep going. That a boy, just keep going. So um, I feel like Ariana preached my sermon this morning already. So uh, definitely kindred spirits and um, just so blessed to have her beside me in the future and now. So, um, yeah. Love you, babe. Yeah, I know. It's like, where's the aisle? Where's Pastor Chris? Let's just do this. Um, so, um, difference makers. You know, growing up and um, going to Bible school, we had this saying called, I just want to be a history maker and a world shaker. I just wanted to impact lives and just love God and love people and um, make a difference. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, I told you it's going to be one of those mornings, so (laughs) just bear with me. Um. Yeah, um, you know, question I had, this, the sermon title I have this morning is From Harlot to Hero, and uh, how do those two go together? We're going to find out today. It's about a story named Rahab, and uh, about a woman who was a prostitute and sold her body, but in the end wound up in Hebrews 11. In the faith chapter of the Bible, where she believed God that she was going to be delivered and her family was going to be delivered. Believed it. She was the only woman captured in Hebrews 11 and was shared in that chapter. It's a faith chapter. We call it the hall of faith. It's where all the great people of God through the stories and through the Bible is mentioned She's one of them. She wasn't mentioned as Rahab. She was mentioned as Rahab the prostitute. This morning, I want to talk to you about how your identity is not found in your past. Your identity is found in who God's created you to be. And he's created you to be a hero. He's created you to be a hero to others. All of us have heroes inside of us and we're going to look into Rahab's life and explore what made her a hero I'm just going to pray Jesus I thank you for this time and the season of my life that I get to walk out the promises that you've put on my life to be a history maker and a world shaker to be a difference maker to be a hero to those that need someone in their life, just to be a handshake or a hug or a word of encouragement. We thank you, God, that you've created us all to be that way. Yet some of us are hiding behind the fear, the wall of the fear. A lot of us are doubting and a lot of us are not sure where to go or how to get there. But, Lord, you have a plan. And the plan is just rooted and grounded in knowing who you are, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I pray that this this morning that people will get a hold of you and that they will see me through you. And they won't see my story, but they'll see your story in me. In Jesus' name I pray. We said amen. Question, who's been your hero? Who's been the hero's In your life. I want to tell you a story about a hero. I I was 16 years old. 
I was a punk kid, thought I knew everything. You know, I guess senior or junior in high school, and I thought I had the world by the hands. And um, growing up in church, I've had youth pastors come and go. And, um, you know, just really, they just seemed like, you know, dominoes. You know, one would fall, the other one fall. And I feel like I was a part of that, <laughs> a part of their falling uh, because I was a rebellious teenage church kid that um, caused havoc and just whatever I could do, I did that uh, probably wasn't godly or um, good in youth pastor's eyes. You know what I mean? And um, so I had this other youth pastor to come through. His name was David of Winstead. And um, I remember him coming to me. I was, I was 16 at the time, and he said, hey, Bill, you know, because we would have basketball, and I'd bring 20 or 30 guys, and we'd literally play three, four hours during the week and just carry on, goof off, have fun, you know, just like normal teenage kids would. He says, man, I need to, I'd love for you to come to youth group one night, you know, and just be a part and, you know, just maybe invite some of your friends and, um, I looked at him and I said, man, I'll give you some advice. I'm 16, you know, punk kid, you know. I said, best thing for you to do is pack your bags. I said, just like everybody else did. Just leave because we don't need you and we don't want you. Just a little kid. And I think I put a challenge up before him. And he stood the ground and um, didn't leave next year just was faithful and tried and true and just personal experiences that I had um, with life got in a car accident and just wasn't really in a good spot and he came over and visited it and I was like man I don't really need you or want you or just you know it would probably be better for you just to leave you know just really cold and bitter and resentful he says, I'm not going anywhere. You know, I'm not. This is where I'm staying. And um, two, three months later, you know, I didn't have much to do. I was kind of, you know, 17 years old, tore up from the floor up and just unsure of what my life was going to look like. And You know, I knew Jesus. I knew about Jesus. I knew that something was special for my life, but just really fighting it, and um, went to youth group, and I gave my life to the Lord. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty radical. Um, went up to the altar and just prayed a prayer, just got I'm tired of living my life. I was six, seventeen, and I just knew if I continued to walk down the road I was going with drugs and, you know, women and partying and gambling, you know, I, I could see where I was heading just as a young kid. And I said, man, that's not the direction I want to go. I want to do something powerful with my life where, you know, they talk about me that I've done something good. So I went up and prayed. I gave my life to the Lord. And I said, God, I'm tired of living my life. And I just heard his voice. I said, good. I said, no, Lord, I, I don't think you understand. I'm just tired of trying to figure it out. I'm tired. I just literally want to just jump off a bridge. I really want to just end my life. Like, done. You know what I mean? Stick a fork in me. Done. And uh, he said, good. I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Like, I am wanting to take a gun to my head. And just end it all because I, I can't figure it out in my head. I can't work it out. And he says, good. He says, you have to die so that I can live in you and through you. And through that, my life was changed forever. I literally got off the ground. There was this weight that lifted off my shoulders. I literally could breathe different. Like the things that I saw were 
were just more clear. I don't know how to explain it. The trees, the the sky, the, the just the grass, everything around me just seemed more alive. I remember telling my friends the experience, and they were like, "Well, where do we buy that? Like, what, what can, what drug are you talking about?" I said, "It's no drug. It's his name is Jesus." I came encountered with the true Messiah, the true King of Kings, the true God that came 2,000 years ago and he took away all the pain, he took away all the hurt, he took away all the doubt, he took away everything. Now I was once blind, but now I see, I know that there's something in me that God's called me to be a difference maker and a world shaker. And it came from a hero. That wouldn't leave. That didn't give up. That believed in me. Believed in God. And I know that there's heroes in here. That God's calling you to something great. To something powerful. For one kid. One adult. One person. Maybe multiple. Maybe a city. Maybe a country, whatever it may it may be, God's calling us to be heroes. Rahab was a hero. At the time, she was a harlot. I'm going to take you to that story now. So it's found in Joshua chapter two. I'm going to just tell you kind of the up story. Children of Israel have left Egypt. I'm sure you've heard about the ten plagues. And uh, Moses coming out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea, dry ground. They get to the promised land, about two months journey. Moses send 12 spies. Ten of them come back. Two of them was Joshua and Caleb, came back with a good rapport. The other ten came back, oh, Moses, we can't go in there. There's giants. There's things that are just absolutely will terrorize us. They will kill us. We can't do it. Joshua's like, man, but did you see the grapes? They're the size of cantaloupes. Did you see the honey? It's sweet as nectar. It is amazing. Like if we just got a chance to go over and see God's deliverance and see God is able, we will see God at work. Moses took the 10 and said, you know what? Maybe it's not right now. Maybe the time isn't right. So what do they do? I'm sure you know the story. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years. Just because of the fear of not being able to succeed. Just because of the fear of maybe dying. Or maybe not being successful. That's what just keeps running up in my spirit. There's some of us that are afraid that we might not succeed whatever is in front of us. So guess what? We hold back and we say, not right now. I'm preaching to me this morning too, right? Heroes are the ones that will believe and move forward. Heroes are the ones that will honor the people next to them. Heroes are the ones that will stand even when the bad is going crazy and they're going to stand in the midst and fight to the end. So the story goes on 40 years later. Joshua now has taken over the children of Israel. Moses died and they're at that same place. Good thing is Joshua got a little bit of brains. He says, look, I'm not going to send 12 people. I'm going to send two people and scout out. So they go over into the land and they go to Jericho. They go to the Jericho wall. Now they find a way where they can now go in. They enter. These two spies are entered into the land. Now I'm sure that they just didn't go to Rahab and say, hey, Can you let me in because we need your help? And the reason why I know this is because at the time that they get to Rahab's door, 
there were other people looking for these two spies. So I just imagine what it would be like to go in and be those spies. I'd be knocking on them. Yo, can you let me in? We're not from here, but we can help you if you help us. No, go away, go away. Knock on the other door. Hey, can you let me in? No, go away, right? So murmurs got around to the king. Hey, there's these spies coming to check out the land. So this is where the story unfolds. From the harlot to a hero. Your identity is not found in what you've done in your past. Your identity is found in who God's created you to be. Let's look at um, Joshua chapter 2. And um, I'm going to go from verse 8. I know I said 9 to the uh, camera guy, but let me read verse 8 if that's okay. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land. And that there is a great fear of you has fallen on us. So that all who live in this country are melting with fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when they came out of Egypt. And what did you and Sion and Og, the two of the kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you were completely destroyed, verse 11. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. The Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. I mean, let me just pause right there. This woman isn't a children of Israel. She is the enemy. And she's saying, we have heard the stories in the last 40 years of all the things that God has done. And what I know from the stories, this is what Rahab is saying, is your God is the God. And we know that you are here to take over Jericho. Can you imagine what these spies are thinking? We've been wandering in this wilderness for 40 years. Is God really going to deliver us? Is God really? Because the fear has already gripped the children of Israel. Like, you know, Joshua's man of faith, and he's believing, but then the spies are in there. Is this... Like, they're, they're looking at this 46-foot wall and say, there is no way we're penetrating that wall. There's no way. They get inside, and Rahab's the first one that said, we might as well surrender because you're here to destroy us. And the spies are like, what? What's going on? There's no way. Okay, well, now we know. There's fear that's hitting the, the, uh, our enemies, and now... We need to go back and tell Joshua, now is the time. We got to seize the moment. Can I tell you something? What is out in front of you is your promised land, is your destiny. And the things that, that hold you back, the fear, is not allowing you to get to the people you need to get to. Uh, you know, babe, you did such a great job. I mean, honestly, I couldn't have even said it better than you and I'm just kind of echoing what she said this morning God is calling epic church to a whole nother level he's calling epic church to walk in a place of faith and a place of destiny and a place of beyond what our capability in our minds are and in order for our church to walk that way the people of God have to walk that way we have to think and believe that God is able. Not, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine about this sermon. He did, he's actually preaching on something very similar. So it is pretty cool talking to him. And he said, do you know that there is 60,000 thoughts that go through a person's brain a day? 60,000. He says, do you know that 80%, I'm getting way ahead of my sermon, but that's okay, right? 80% of those thoughts are negative. 60,000. I don't know what to do the math, but I'm thinking it's around 55,000 thoughts, and you probably got like 15 positive thoughts. Could you imagine just shifting that just a little bit on the way where we get 50% on the positive and 50% on the negative. I'm just, you know, maybe I'm thinking too small. Maybe imagine if we thought 100%, those 60,000 thoughts in a positive direction, how much more could we move forward? 
How much more could we believe for the impossible? Is someone getting this this morning? 60,000, 80% are negative. And I'll be honest with you, I'm probably in that 85, Ariana would say. You probably, I mean, just before I getting up here, I said, babe, I don't know if I'm prepared enough. I don't know what's going to happen. And I just knew that a cry was coming on just because I feel like I'm in this season that God's just really bringing me around to my promised land. And I'm just so grateful and so thankful and just so just let's go kind of like whatever we need to do for God, let's do it. You know what I mean? And um, that's where I'm at. And I want to inspire others to be there with me. But there's a process, right? So let's look and see what happens. Verse 12. Did I read verse 11? I think I did. Verse 12. Now then, please swear to me that the Lord, that, that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for our lives, or your lives, the men measured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. All right, I'm just going to preach my sermon because I was going to literally just read this and then preach, but I seem like I'm reading and preaching at the same time. So the first point you need to understand is we need to believe. We've got to believe. We got to kick the cans and you don't have to, yeah, you don't, you, you got to kick the cans in the rear. You can't, that's a lie. Come on, somebody. You got to kick the cans in the pants you gotta let's let's say that together you gotta kick the cans in the pants you gotta kick the cans in the pants you have to change your stinking thinking you got to change and that's it right there change our stinking thinking if you want different results you need to think differently 60 percent or 60,000 thoughts that go through your brain 80 percent are negative Come on, man. Let's just turn the tide and start believing that God is able. Let's start looking into seeing what God can and not look at what God can't. Come on, somebody. Listen, you talk about someone who's rational and someone who feels like well, I have to think things through. I'm that thinker. I got to wait. I'll go shopping. I got to make sure I got the right deal. And I got to just figure it all out in my brain, right? I just can't be satisfied just having what's in front of me. I got to oh, figure that. Ariana's like, amen. Amen. Help them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Yeah. Here's the thing. We got to start thinking differently. We got to start getting. And you say, well, Bill, how do we do that? That's a great question you ask. Can I tell you something? Where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. You want to build your faith up. You want to change your stinking thinking. Get the Bible in your mind. The Bible says that don't be conformed to this wor world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know the good and pleasing will of the Father. You want to change your stinking thinking? Get the word in your mind and let it get down in your heart and let it change you forever come on somebody change you I have you know Dave you know my youth pastor David you know we after he stood the ground and believed and walked through hell and high water with me Every week we would be in the word studying. Every week we'd be fasting and praying and just believing for God for revival. Every week we would just be walking by faith. And literally those 20 to 30 people that were coming to basketball, guess what? They started coming to church. Not only that, not only did they start coming to church, they started coming to prayer group. When you got 60 kids showing up to prayer group, you know God's doing something. Come on, somebody. If we had 120 kids show up on a Wednesday night. We God was doing something so powerful, and it all had to do with one person standing, believing, honoring, and standing for what God is doing. Come on, we just need one person, one person to make a difference, to one person just to stand in the gap. You know, um, the second, so the, the first one is believing, the second one is honoring, right? So, you know, honoring someone and honoring the gifts and honoring, see, Rahab said, Look. I know that your God is going to deliver you uh, to us or through us or, you know, you're going to take over us. I just want to be a part of you. I, I don't want to be 
in the Jericho anymore. Like, I want to get it in a covenant with the children of Israel. See, she knew how to position herself and her family in a way to get that blessing. Can I tell you something? Your next blessing comes for the, maybe the next person you meet. Come on, somebody. Your next blessing may come from the person you already know, but you just haven't got around to ask the right question for. Come on, somebody. It's all about the, you know, my mom always said, you know, Bill, it's not about what you know. It's about what? Who you know. You know, so I think of Pastor Chris and Lori and how we are connected to them in a spiritual way. They are our spiritual coverings. And the great thing about it is we get a little bit of the blessing that comes from their life because they're the head, right? And the great thing about it is as we bless them and as we honor them and as we give to them, guess what? It comes back over into us. Come on, I'm just giving you some principles here to live by, right? So here's the thing. Your next breakthrough is going to come from someone or the, per, the person you may meet next, or the person that, you know, you might already know. And I think about all the times where I've come in contact with people like Pastor David that catapulted me into a, a, a place of ministry and a place of, I think about my friend Lyle, who I witnessed to for 10 years, and then I fell back from the Lord, and then he got me going back to church. I witnessed to this guy for 10 years. I would drop him. He's one of my best friends in high school. I witnessed, hey, Bill, I don't need any of that. Bill, I'm all good. Bill, you know, I'm tired of you giving me this Jesus thing, right? I then walk away from God, right? I went through a divorce. My ex-wife had an affair. I was bitter. I walked away. Oh, woe is me. I can't believe this is happening. Look what, guess what God sends me? The person I've been witnessing to for 10 years says, Billy, I've been going to church for like two months now. I've never asked anyone to go to church with me. And I knew that if anybody would go to church with me, it would be you. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to go there. Come on, man. You talk about a hero. He was the hero for me. I mean, I was in the front row with a hangover and literally just sweating, saying, what am I doing here? I can't believe it. You know, he said, well, I'll pay for your lunch. I'll tell you what, food will go a long way in my life. <laughs> food will go, hey, you come to church, I'm going to pay, pay for your lunch. All right, game on. But anyway, 10 years I witnessed to this guy. In two months he went, and God had a plan. Come on. We got to honor the people that are beside us. We got to honor those. And here's the thing. I, what I realized in the last 13 years of my journey is that there were times where I was believing for something great. I was believing for an incredible woman. I'm just going to be honest with you. A woman of God, a woman of passion, a woman that loved God more than I loved God, that loved people more than I loved people. And it took 13 years, but I finally found this amazing woman. Well, God brought her to me. Come on. Yeah, that a boy. So the third point is stand. We're going to look at, and then we're going to wrap it up right here. So the third point is stand. Listen, if I read the rest of this ver uh, verse, it would talk about the spies left, and they went back to Jared. They stayed in this little uh, cave for three days and they camped out to make sure no one would get them and then they went to Joshua and then the process started he, he came back Joshua this is what's going on they're all afraid they know that something's getting ready to happen right and Joshua's like game on let's go we are taking Jericho and we're going to destroy any other person that comes in front of us right so that's a whole nother story but in the time where Rahab let the spies go, there had to be a stand. And she had to be anchored in something greater than who she was. She had to gather her mom, her dad, her sisters, her brothers, her uncles. Now you have to understand, it would be different if I said, hey mom, I need you to come over to the house right now because it's getting ready to go down. Like, down like when the wall's falling down it's getting ready to go down mom be like all right let's go right but understand Rahab just didn't have that character that a lot of mom and dads would be proud of come on somebody they wouldn't be saying okay Rahab we're right over they'd be like what 
I haven't talked to you in years. You've been out doing your thing. You've been Vogue or Rogue or whatever it's called. Sorry, Rogue, you've been out, MIA. Now you want us to come to your house? She had to put a stand, yes. That life is over. Those things are past me. I'm speaking to someone right now that just got saved a week or two ago or maybe a month ago that you've been inviting your family, you've been inviting your friends, and they're saying, just give it a couple more days and you'll be back into your old ways. Come on, somebody. There's a place where you have to stand and know that God has something great for your life, that you're not going to go back to the ways who you used to be because there's something greater and there's something more that is you're responsible for more than yourself. You're responsible for everyone that's looking at you and waiting for bad things to happen or for you to fall, fall back, right? And I'm not saying it's about works. I'm not saying anything like that. But there's a responsibility when you put on that badge that I'm a believer and I'm a follower of Christ. Come on, man. You're going to have to stand. Not only are you going to have to stand for others and gather them in and convince them, there's going to have to be an urgency. It's The time is now. The time is now. Don't wait. Let's go. Have that urgency behind it, right? Come on. Now's the time. You have to take a stand and believe that God is going to see you through. I'll tell you a little story. So, um... About a year and a half, um, I went out with this pretty girl to lunch, right? And now you got to understand, I, I was waiting for some time just to have this conversation with this pretty lady. And uh, we talking about stuff and this and that. And I said, well, I just need to tell you something. She goes, yeah, what's that, Billy? I was like, I just need to tell you I like you. She says, oh, that's, that's nice. I said, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I like you and would like to take you out on a date. She says, oh, I mean, I, I love you as a friend, but you know, come on. I told you I wouldn't let you live it down. So I said, oh, hey, I get it. I get it. Friend zone. I'm here. I get it. Right. But I, in my mind, I'm like, because I'm a sales guy, no doesn't mean no. It just means not right now. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Don't you say no to me all you want, but I'll get you. I'll get you sooner than later. That's right. I just wore her down. And then um, it was a year and a half. Um, we went on a mission trip together, and we had, we had a great time. It was just awesome. God just did some great things over there and brought us together. And when I got back, I heard word. I heard Ariana likes you. I said, like meaning like, like as a friend? <laughs> or like, 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 you know? I said, she said, they, they like, 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 like. I said, I got to go. <laughs> Ariana, I got my photo. Hey, girl, how about that trip? That mission trip was awesome. Woo! Yeah! small talk hey what you doing Friday night I mean it didn't take me but literally 30 seconds I was on the phone boom and then the story goes and we we had a great time and it's just been awesome been being God so here's the thing you're gonna have to stand even when you don't understand what's going on and how things are going to work out and how are the walls are going to come tumbling down and you're in a house inside and if you want you can um Look at the, the, the um, wall, because I took a picture of it. I'm not sure if it was. Yeah, that's it. So check this out. Literally 46 feet high, there was two walls in between. See down the bottom, five feet thick. And they were living inside the top one. And it's like, all right, well, if these walls fall down, how am I going to be living? But God. See, the, impossi the impossibility is not impossible with God. All things are possible. God is able to do more exceedingly abundantly above all that I can think, ask or think through the spirit that works within us. And all of us are called to be heroes. So how, Bill, can I be a hero? This is point four. That's when the band kind of like comes up and we're going to finish out. <laughs> Feed your hero. Did you like that? I got this shirt right here. Feed your hero. I came prepared. You see, I'm a part of a, um, a transformation um, leadership 
um, kind of work, I would say, training, where we, um, we minister to people. And they come in. It's not really a, a, an education kind of like where we talk or teach and then people listen. It's more of an ex- experiential, like where you go through different scenarios and you start to explore, like, why you do what you do and how is this coming up and why, you know, why people are experiencing me this way. Why are they experiencing you that way? And they do a little deeper dive, right? And this lady wrote a book on, it's called Feed Your Hero, how all of us have heroes. Here's the thing. Question comes and says, how do we allow our heroes to grow? I'm going to read a a little parable. A grandfather is talking with his grandson, and he says, there are two wolves inside inside of us, which are always at battle. Well, it's the last page. One is a good wolf, which represents things like kindness, bravery, and love. The other is a bad wolf, which represents things like greed, hatred, and fear. The grandson stops and thinks about it for a second. Then he looks up at his grandfather and says, Grandfather, which one wins? The grandfather quietly replies, the one you feed. Here's the thing. You've got two dogs that sit on your shoulder. you got the hero, and I'd like to say a harlot, but we know that that's really of the flesh, and you have the flesh. Rahab became a hero because she no longer fed the dog of the harlot. But now she started to feed the dog of the hero. She started to put things in her mind that was not negative anymore, but now is turning around to be positive. You know, I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know if you're wandering in the wilderness and you aren't sure what is really going on, and that's fine. I was was there, right? Or maybe you're at that precipice where you're like, hey, should I go over to the brush? Should I take a risk and see wherever you're at? Or, or maybe you're still in Egypt and you're not even sure like who Jesus is and you, you just don't know the relationship that you can have and the life and the freedom and the, just the abundance and look different and act different and be different, really. If that's you, so many areas that I could pray for. I'd like to first pray for those that just have never met Jesus You heard my story from the beginning, how I was lost and just really wasn't fulfilled or happy or content with my life and where it was going. If that's you in here, with all eyes closed, let's go ahead and give people reverence. If you just would say, hey, man, I'd just like to meet that guy you're talking about that literally radically changed your life. And in nine months, I was then going to Bible Bible school down in Cleveland, Tennessee, getting a pastoral ministry degree. So I was truly lost. And when I was found, I was like, all in. Let's go. This is the answer. If you want to meet that person who changed my life, his name is Jesus. If that's you here this morning, you say, you know what, Bill? I just, I need something fresh. I need something new. I want to be able to see different. I want to be able to hear different. I want to be different. If that's you, just raise your hands. I'd love to meet Jesus as my Lord and Savior. All right. Now, if you're in a place where you're saying, hey, I just feel like I'm behind the wall and I'm just looking at fear all the time and it's holding me back from moving forward and moving on with with my life. Maybe it's past relationships that you're afraid to take a risk to go out with someone, or maybe it's, you know, um, you're afraid to move jobs because you're not sure what's going to happen, or whatever it may be, that fear grips you and holds you back. I just want to be able to pray for you. If that's you, raise your hand. Amen, 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 amen. Because I really, truly believe that Epic is in a season where we need as many heroes as possible, as many people that are willing to say, yes, I want to serve. 
yes, I want to be that hero. Yes, I want to come in and love on people. Could you just imagine what it would be like if we had 30 people just lined up outside, giving everyone high fives, hugs, just, and I'm, I'm sure we got about 10 already doing it now. I'm just saying, imagine if it was 20 more, what this place would feel like. Oh, my goodness. And you guys do a great job. I'm not saying you do, but just imagine what it would be like. We need everyone to be a part of that. If that's something that you want to see, not necessarily 20 people extra, but just a, a move of people to activate the gifts and walk out into, the, into their calling. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. All right, all right. Bunch of people. Praise the Lord. There's more. There's more. Amen. Can I tell you something that fear will never go away? You're like, hold up, Pastor. Will you, be, you should be preaching about faith. Here's the thing. Faith is being able to come against fear and overcome it. Fear's always going to be there. Just know that faith can move past the fear that grips you. It's always going to be there. It was, it was there when I walked out, and I knew I was going to cry like a baby. Come on, man. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. Let's stand. And I'm just going to close this out in prayer, and then they're going to come and do announcements. I apologize for going a little late. Hope you forgive me for that. Lord, I just thank you for this awesome day. We thank you. This is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, that we're going to believe for the impossible. We're going to honor those that are around us, and we're going to stand for the promises, and we're going to believe that, God, you are going to do a great and mighty thing in our lives, Lord. We just come against any fear, any doubt, any discouragement would hold them back from pursuing their passion, pursuing their destiny, pursuing the things that you've called them to. And we just pray that faith will rise, God, and courage will rise, Lord, and they'll stand in hope, and they'll stand in courage, and they'll stand in love, God, for the people that they're destined to encounter so that they can be their, a hero. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, all right. Is everyone ready to go out and feed their hero this week? Yeah. All right. So I just have a few more, two more announcements before you all head out for the day. If this is your uh, first time here with us at Epic, welcome. Thank you for coming. We're so great, grateful that you're here. We do have um, a, a nice, awesome gift for you to walk away with, this awesome Epic mug. So if you just go outside into the uh, mezzanine, the next steps table will have that for you. And if this is your second time here with us, welcome back. And we also would like for you to leave with an awesome gift, which is this epic shirt, also available at the next steps table. Most importantly, if you made the choice and raised your hand today um, to give your life to Jesus for the first time, we are so, so, so uh, excited and happy and excited for the journey that's ahead. We actually have an awesome team over here to your left of the theater. It's our Fresh Start team. They're kind of over there in a quiet corner. Please walk on over there. They're there waiting for you to give you an awesome package of some some good tools to use on this new journey or just to even just be present with you and pray. And... Lastly, also what we always want to do is take a moment and give thanks to all of, a, all of you here at Epic for your generosity. Without your generosity, what we do here would never, ever, ever come, come to fruition. So again, as you walk out to the right of the theater, the tie boxes are to your right. We also encourage you to text to give as well. Amen. Pastor Bill, do you want to pray us out? Yes. Okay. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she, she awesome? I mean, I can listen to her forever. I mean, like, she, her voice is so soothing, isn't it? She's like, yeah. And then drop your money right here. And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's pray, all right? Jesus, we thank you so much, God, that you're doing something awesome in all of our lives. You're doing something awesome in my life and 
everyone's life here, God. We thank you, God, that your word says all things work together for the good, that love God and are called according to your purposes. And we thank you for that, God, even in the desert, even in Egypt, even in the promised land, God, you are working it all out for the good. And we thank you for that. We ask God a blessing over their life today, that they will walk and go and be prosper, meet people, God. And Lord, let there be blessings and breakthroughs coming their way. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. God bless you.